Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Baptism of Jesus Sunday and um, a chance for us to uh, talk about the colors of the church here. It's going to be the theme of my sermon. I hope it, I hope it goes okay. But blue to white to green. And uh, uh, so I hope some, some interesting things to think about on the way out the door as we shift to green this afternoon. We could. Uh, with that being said, next sun, or Saturday at 9 o'clock, Alter Guild is asking for help to take down the white and shift over to green, which means removing all of the Christmas stuff and uh, baptism of Jesus white, and off we go into uh, Epiphany. But if you have time, this Saturday at 9 o'clock would really be appreciated. Lots of hands make light work. In your bulletin, it's not a mistake. This isn't November. Normally you see these in November, but we really are sure that there are at least some of you that just didn't quite get around to this and we need you. You know, if we've got enough readers and enough people for children's sermons and to put coffee on in the kitchen and all the kind of the daily things that keep this place alive, uh, then, you know, the treasure follows. You know, the heart follows. And... Um, so anyway, uh, if you have a few minutes to pray over this and see if there's maybe something new you'd be willing to do in the church, uh, this is last call for sure. And then stewardship's going to start putting together the Time and Talents Handbook for the whole year. Um, one thing to lift up, uh, it was decided this Thursday's Christian education meeting that we're not going to be having the all-youth benefit meal on the 30th of January, not with the news about the peak in COVID over that time frame in South Dakota. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Not everyone would be comfortable working in the kitchen and sitting beside others having a meal. That's going to get pushed uh, closer to Lent, probably Ash Wednesday meal, but just be mindful of that. It's in the bulletin. Uh, wrong, we had printed the bulletin before the meeting, so just to kind of lift that up right away. Some of you had been asking about that. Nope, no tickets today. We're going to wait just a little bit on that. Uh, so um, the second half of the Sunday school year, youth ministry year, kicks off today in a very special way. The Christian Ed Committee has been working hard since early fall at getting ready for kind of a reboot. We know the kind of two years we've been through. We feel like we're emerging out of that. And so a special... Uh, all-parent youth meeting after church today right back up here in the sanctuary. So here's how it's going to go. Our little pre-K all the way up through fourth grade, let's get them into world Sunday school like always. Our Sunday school director, uh, Brittany, is, will be down there and getting all of that started. And then she will be able to slip away and come up and be with us for kind of the all-youth part of the conversation. And then we'll get into all kinds of things, uh, perhaps an acolyte program starting now with certain age groups, our middle bracket of kids, helping with the lighting of candles and children's sermons and other things. Big youth trips to talk about and really nail down in the next 10 days and so forth. But all kinds of things that we've never talked about before being talked about after church today. So I see a number of parents here and quite a few down in the fellowship hall too. So we've got two congregations here on these mornings and um, it's going to be a good visit for us here after church today. The Wednesday schedule is normal, confirmation, adult choir, by the way, adult choir is uh, looking forward to a full volume again. So if you'd like to come on and join, there's always room in the choir for you. Um, church council's meeting this Thursday night, the last chance. Uh, they'll be taking the last run at the mission plan for 2022, and, and you can be praying for that guidance for them. Women of the church, be mindful of Epiphany, our Epiphany study, on the 18th of January. So not this Tuesday, the following Tuesday, the 18th, 6.30, and we're going to have... Um, a lot of fun, I think, with a Bible study I found that was written by faculty of Baylor University. I have found it really meaningful, and I think we're going to learn a lot about Epiphany, what it means to be Gentiles, uh, among other things. And then, if anybody knows how to make a king's cake, that is the suggested fellowship time treat following. The king's cake is the magi cake uh, made around the world for Epiphany. Never heard of it. So if anybody wants to jump in and try making some king's cake, talk to me, okay? Talk to me. 
Sign-ups are really important. The backpack program, we do it in January. I took the first Wednesday. Beth Fleer, thank you. You've signed up for this coming Wednesday. We could use a couple more drivers for covering that really important little piece of work on Wednesdays. You get the tubs, you drive to Feeding South Dakota, you get loaded, you come back, and the janitors help unload you at the school. It's that simple. Celebrating love. Downtown Brandon, February 5th at the VFW. We've already let the law enforcement know that they'll be adding extra. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we do have fun. We do have fun. So the VFW in Brandon, February 5th, Saturday night, February 5th, sign up. Sign up is downstairs, and uh, that would be great. And last but not least, our confirmation youth and guides are going to go and take the Stampede Hockey in on Saturday night, the 19th. We get 20 tickets, so it can be parents and the kids, and once they're gone, then, then we don't get discounted tickets anymore. So that sign-up is down on the youth bulletin board this morning. Other announcements this morning. That's enough. We're busy starting here in the second half of the year in terms of the academic program, aren't we? Any other announcements this morning? Let us stand as we head into worship with a call to worship that you may recognize from early December, but one line in this call to worship so caught my attention as we think about what it means to be living into the season of green, I will hold the Christ light for you. I want you to hear those words at the beginning and in the middle of my sermon today. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Please join with me in this responsive call to worship. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. I will hold the Christ light for you in the nighttime of your fear. Remain standing for our opening hymn, hymn number 442, All Who Believe in Are Baptized. pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service that we may rejoice to be called children of God 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our first reading comes from Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. Near the end of Israel's exile in Babylon, God promises to bring the people home. They need no longer be afraid because the one who formed, created, and called them by name now redeems them from all their enemies. God declares them precious and honored, and God loves them. But now says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be there with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom. Ethiopia and Seba are exchanged for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, I love you. I will give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I shall gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The second reading comes from Acts 8, 14 through 17. Peter and John are sent to support the new Christians in Samaria, a group that had recently baptized after hearing the good news of Christ through the preaching of Philip. Here the Samaritans received the gift of the Holy Spirit in the laying on of hands. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Peter and John laid their hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Harley. Please stand for our singing of the Alleluia verse, verse 1 of Arise, Your Light Has Come. Holy Gospel comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the third chapter. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Praise to you, Christ. Congregation may be seated at this time with the children. Please come forward for the children's sermon.
Good morning. Thanks for coming up. We have a, a, a small group here. I thought it'd be a little bit bigger. So first of all, does anybody know what kind of bird this is? What is it? Very good. It's beautiful, isn't it? I'll let you look at that while I do that lesson, okay? Okay, have you ever been asked to clean your room when you have a friend come over? <sighs> or if your mom and dad invite another family over and you have to clean your room? Yeah, or clean your room or help clean the house or pick things up, correct? <clears throat> just, just so you know, you're not the only house that does that. We've all done it. I did it with when I had kids at home, and I still have to do it. I still have to clean up after if I want to have friends over. And why do you think we do that? Do you have any thoughts? Well, my thought was, well, I clean before they come. I want my friends or neighbors or whoever's coming to my house to feel welcome. It wouldn't be very much fun to have them come to my house and, oh, there's my pajamas laying in the middle of the floor, a blanket, pillows all over, newspapers, magazines, you name it. What would be laying around in your house? Or the dishes full of of uh, the sink full of dishes and then what a mess that would be. The counter's still full. So you clear all of that off, don't you? Because you want them to have a comfortable place to sit and feel relaxed that they don't have to look at all your junk. So that's the reason of that. Well, I shared this idea of cleaning up for guests and I think it's similar to what's happening in today's story. But instead of cleaning rooms and homes, John the Baptist wants us to clean up our lives. So, the, because he, has, he knows we have two very important guests that have to come into our lives. And the very first one is, who do you think the very first one we need in our lives? Family. We need Jesus in our lives. Yes, we need Jesus in our lives. And then once Jesus is baptized, what's the next thing we get? It's the Holy Spirit. So we have two guests to get ready for. So when Jesus is baptized, like in today's story, we hear that he then receives God's Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit in his life, we see Jesus go out and share the good news and the good spirit with others like Jesus healing love, his forgiveness, and his mercy. He also invites people, like his disciples, to follow him and learn how to do it, to make room for that Holy Spirit in their lives. So that takes some time, doesn't it? Later on, and during Pentecost, and I think our church celebrates Pentecost first week in June or something like that, and that's where... Um, uh, the disciples eventually learn how to re receive the Holy Spirit and share the same gifts as Jesus did. The same thing can happen to us. We too can make room for the Holy Spirit, which allows us to learn from Jesus and how to make room for God in our lives. <clears throat> when we do that, we can share the gift of God and the Holy Spirit with people around us just like Jesus did. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for Jesus who teaches us how to receive your Holy Spirit and share your healing, love, and the light to the world and to others. Thank you. I have some Dove chocolates with me. So you, gotta, um, you can take a handful and then share it with somebody in your pew or with a friend, okay? raising the bar if you're giving out dove chocolates. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. There is that progression from the white moment of baptism on into a life, down on the green. That's where we're headed today. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Dear God, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us down here, close, for us, to teach us, to walk beside us, for a Savior known to us. We give you thanks. Amen. Well, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite color? Think about that. I, have, I know what your answer is, little Hadley. I already know. What's your favorite color? I don't know why. From my earliest memory, I always told people green. Green's been my favorite color as long as I can remember. And there's lots of shades of green. So mine is a little darker than a John Deere green. John Deere green's got a little bit of yellow, a little more yellow than I like in it. But not a Philadelphia Eagle green. That's got a lot of black in it. If you're a painter, you look at that, it's got a lot of black in it. Maybe because I was born in Wisconsin, you know where I'm headed. <laughs> Probably has to be a Green Bay Packer green in Randy Nelson's downstairs. I should have had him bring one of his real Green Bay Packer jerseys along today. Kind of like a Green Bay Packer green, if you're familiar with that. And kind of Christmas tree green when they're cut fresh, kind of like that color green. Well, I was thinking about green because I was thinking about the colors of the church and what we do with them. Now, all of that kind of stuff is man-made, you know. Jesus didn't say one thing about pyramids, now one. Never talked about colors on the altar. That's all been made up by the church. But for good reason. It allows us to teach. It allows us to um, stay focused upon biblical themes. Make no doubt about that part. The movement just in the last weeks is significant. Not that long ago, blue. Advent blue. Wondering, watching, waiting. That's the beginning of the church year. Then, of course, Christmas, that glory on high, the angels to shepherds. By the way, every time you see white on the altar, glory's distant. Glory's distant. In that you hear something from distant heaven, either angels at trans or the voice of God on Transfiguration Sunday, or angels at the tomb on Easter. Whenever you've got white, you've got some glory that's separate from human, uh, common human life. We'll kind of come back to some of that. So the Magi ended Christmas just this past Thursday. Thanks again, Troy and Kathy Dolly. Had Magi uh, Day of Epiphany men's breakfast out at the farm. Really a good chance to talk about being Gentiles. That's what the Magi were. So blue to white. And they come bringing, they left all their gifts here in the manger, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They were thinking that this Jesus, this Messiah, would stay up high, lofty, white, God's son as king, but the king that they would come to discover didn't rise up above people at all, not high apart or distant white, but they would discover a king that stayed down. I don't think Jesus had a lot of use for gold, frankincense, and myrrh because Jesus got too low for that. On earth, the progression in color is this. Blue, we waited for this Jesus. The heavens announced Christmas, Jesus, white. And now, as fast as we can get there, green. Green. What Jesus needed was loaves of bread, fish, coats to share, common. When I teach kids about church colors, I always say this about green. Jesus is down mowing the lawn whenever you see green on the altar. I've had, I've had former confirmation students stop me in high B and they're in their 20s and 30s and say, ah, I know what season it is. It's Jesus is mowing the lawn. Well, Jesus mows the lawn a lot. Down with people. Touching people eating meals with people, listening to people with real troubles. The season is green. Now, tomorrow, this afternoon, Epiphany begins. You come next Sunday, everything will be green. 
Then we take a little break and we get into Lent and white and then we're right back after a little high Pentecost Sunday. Thank you for mentioning that, Beth. Then about 25 weeks of green. Every single gospel reading that I could grab and I looked back at a handful to make sure I was right about this, Jesus is right down on the lawn pushing the mower around with people. Sometimes John is pushing it, sometimes Peter is pushing it, sometimes it's Mary or Mary Magdalene in the story. It's just fishermen, people having trouble, right down on the ground. Let's go a little further with this color stuff. It's not just about Jesus. These altar colors aren't just about Jesus or God down on the lawn, living among us full of grace and truth, as we heard on Christmas night. Already in the season of white, they're starting to hint what kind of, what kind of a Savior God has been born. But a time when we do well to ponder what we're doing with our earthly days, our down on the green days. One line again from the prayer of the day, it's so good. Our prayer just minutes ago, God Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service. Faithful in your service. All over my sermon notes, getting ready, I kept writing the word ethic or ethics. Christian ethics, ethos, means you have a heart, means that you listen, you're earthy, you touch, you give, you feed. It's all that kind of stuff when you talk about Christian ethics. Do we have eyes for good? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, kind of some distant, no. Coats to share. Loaves and fish to share. We had a wonderful night, thanks to so many of your generous gifts of sweatshirts and hooded sweatshirts and quilts and blankets down with Church on the Street on December 28th. We were just down on the lawn, just mowing the yard, handing out stuff to people who were so thankful for another layer of protection. Well, today the colors are changing and they're changing really, really fast. The baptism of Jesus is in white, appropriately. The heavens opened, the voice of God, this is my son, my beloved. Wow, white, glistening, pure, perfect. The altar color is white. But boy, quickly now, Jesus into the wilderness, down low to deal with stuff. To deal with stuff. You and I are baptized in Jesus' name to live in the middle of stuff. Every child or adult we baptize, the words are the same. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works. And glorify your Father in heaven. Good works here, tomorrow, in your own house. One of our kids in confirmation last Wednesday night, I challenged them to do something to honor your father and mother. So fourth commandment being studied. Honor your father and the mother. And one little guy had mentioned in small group and repeated to all the kids, leave a note. Leave a note for your mom or dad and tell them something what you appreciate about them. And I said, boy, you do that. You know, you're going to get a car sooner. I mean, <laughs> I, seriously. I mean, that changes the world. Mom, I think you're the best. I think you're the best. I see how hard you work for the family. What are you going to write? What kind of note are you going to leave? That's green, you know. That color of that? What color is that? That's green. That's green. That's glory close. I'm going to have to give Siri Sorensen credit for that. Good theologian. Not glory distant, that's white. Green. Glory close. Intimate. Intimate. So baptism's not magic. Sometimes we make it magic. Reading from Acts is a very short reading. Notice what really makes finally the work of the Spirit come al alive. It is the laying on of hands. It is touch. Even when we're talking about such wild things as wind blowing and the coming of the Spirit, it comes to life when there's touch. That's close, glory, close. Even the work of the Holy Spirit. 
can be painted in green, coffee hours. Oh, I miss the shaking of hands. We're sort of almost accidentally getting back to it. This past fall, we said, wherever two or three gather in my name, there I am with you. That's green. And as I said, handing out gifts on the sidewalks of Sioux Falls to people uh, challenged with their housing if they have any at all. Glory, close, ethics. White to green. Remember, we're washed perfectly clean in the waters of baptism so that we're the sent ones down low. Yes, one more time I'll say it, on the lawn, green. Alvin Ragnus wrote a wonderful devotion, I'm just going to sample into it, called Once Through the Door. And his argument is that, that, that a life of faith is like lived in a castle. Once you're baptized, you're invited into the castle. And I won't go through all the different doors you can open, but the last one is the door of service to which we're called. He says, the door of glad service to those in need is there to enter with its profound satisfaction. It is within this castle that the sublime secrets of the kingdom yield themselves. We learn that it is more blessed to give than to receive. To be a servant, we discover, is far more gratifying than to be served. Outside of the castle, we may have wandered furtively, trying to find the meaning of life. Now we have found it. Dag Hammarskjöld, Norwegian theologian, speaks of entering the door and, quote, from that hour, I was certain that existence is meaningful and that therefore my life is surrender, self-surrender, and my life of self-surrender has found its purpose. I don't know, my favorite color is green. Long before I knew anything about theology, so it's quite accidental, really, but now maybe especially since I am trying to remain faithful as a pastor, serving good common folk, don't take that wrong. My favorite color is green. Faith down low, in the pew, in your homes, with your neighbor, doing what you can do. We're all so capable of doing little things, little things which are big things, of course. No, so we the baptized, our color is green. Picture whatever color green you want. But here's how the church describes that color. Close. Touch. Sweatshirts and hot chocolate. Others. Coffee hours. Phone calls, checking in. What can I do for you? A phone call. Can I hold the Christ light for you? Intimate. The laying on of hands. Benevolence. Loving. Husband. Wife. Children. A friend. Enemy. That color that color looks very good on you. Amen. We sing the hymn of the day.
Please stand as you are able, as we join now in a profession of faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated at this time. We'll receive your Sunday morning offerings. And yes, the children's offering can be brought forward to their little pail up front. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
Dear God, the heavenly white glory of Jesus' baptisms and our own gives way to green, grass living, close, touching, healing, serving. May we, your church, wear the color green for all of our days. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for parents of school-aged children who gather today for this winter rally. Grant us wisdom and the confidence to do what is right for our youngest generation. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for Bethany Meadows congregation today as we worship with them up there. Thank you for their faithful commitment to this gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for Pastor Corey Scott, ordained yesterday, newly a pastor now at Zion Lutheran in Gerritsen. Bless and keep him and that congregation as they begin this chapter of ministry together. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for those needing our prayer and asking for it. We pray today for Beulah Parkinson, young Jordan and young Jaden Ramazani. Continued prayers for Haley Himes as her treatments continue. Young Maya Kiefer, Lowell Richards, Vicki Brault, young Katie Myers, Pastor Lene Sorensen, Terry and Nancy Yellis, Don Nolte, young Slade Johnson, Kenny Kunert, Carrie Ford, Verna Bent, young Mac Whitmire, David Deedy, and all those who we lift up before you in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for those who grieve today. We pray for Denny and Joan Schutte and family upon the death of their brother-in-law, Neil Lux. We pray that Easter would be real, that your Holy Spirit would bring comfort to the entire family. Lord, in your mercy. And dear God, we pray for your guidance, as we always do over the coming week. Bless confirmation students. Bless the adult choir. Bless our church council as it prepares the mission plan for 2022. There are some big steps to be taken. We pray, dear God, that you'd be with us as we continue to be a community of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and give you peace. We have worshiped in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. One last reminder here. Today is the last day, obviously, for the Christmas tree to be up, and those who so generously donated to this year's flower fund at Christmas Eve, come and get an ornament off the tree or along the skirt of the tree. They're there for your taking. That's that's uh, just a little keepsake, really, for you thinking of Beaver Valley at Christmas time. Also, be mindful of those important sign-ups, both on the youth bulletin board and the big bulletin board by the office as you leave today. Our closing hymn, On Our Way Rejoicing. Parents, get those little ones into Sunday school. We'll get going up here at 1035. On Our Way Rejoicing, hymn 537.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.